Hey okay, everybody, welcome back. Now, what I've got here is I've had to take a section out because we had to cut away a little section here so I can put another riser in here that will actually work for the last part of this build. So a couple of pieces have been relaxed in terms of unscrewed and left to move. I've got a screw to get back in here and I'm just going to level these up. I noticed that this wasn't quite flush when I did it. It's dropped a bit even more, but just going to take it up here, drill a couple more holes so that these are absolutely flush. So what I'll do is I'll clamp these two together now underneath so they're perfectly aligned and that way there'll be no kick in this part here, which I did notice. To be fair, this really was the final part of the jigsaw and this ups down was quite important and it was made more complex because there was no real way of screwing uh, any screws in sensibly or at a decent angle so we had to make this compromise on this L shape but it could make the difference I took a line from this and probably should have taken one from that so it's just a, a small tiny adjustment another couple of millimeters on there it really is nothing it's almost able to sandpaper that so I'm just going to see what gap that I actually do have here so it's only allowing me as is possibly 35 36 millimeters across there I'm tempted to do two things I'm tempted to come up under here like that with a, an L bracket here which gives me more meat on there and a fixing here. So I think that will probably be the way that I go. And that way I can come in to drill it from here. And that I think will give me probably about, there's not a lot more, but there is more. I would say almost 65 centimeter millimeters this way, as opposed to 35 this way. Take a mark from there, take that measurement from there to there. So that's 40. So I can make two pieces. I can do a 40 by whatever the depth is, followed by a, um, a 50, for one of an argument, say 52, just give me a bit of wiggle room. Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back to Sand Injunction. Now since my last update, well, I've got to put my hands up and say I've done absolutely nothing to the layout. It hasn't progressed one little bit apart from a few bits of paper that you see laying down beside me. So what's been going on? Well, basically the gallery and my business down in Hythe and commissions that I needed for clients for Christmas all had to take priority and uh, like any other business we have to do that first before we can turn our hands to having a little bit of a play around with our hobbies so this has had to take a bit of a back seat so that's where we're at with that now what am I going to be doing well the tops have gone they are in safe storage down in my uh, painting studio they're out the way they are um, sort of safe and they're not going to warp not going to do anything they're just as they are so until the track on the lower level has been laid tested tried and everything else done to it then i will leave those tops where they are and later on and i will be putting the tops back in and obviously continuing the build from there but initially i've got to start laying track and i never thought that I'll get to this stage so quickly. And I've got to say, had it not been for Julian's help uh, when he came over for that week, I would never be in this position, uh, probably not for another good few months uh, of work. But yeah, it's here, we are here, I am at this point. So I want to talk about what we're doing, how I'm going about laying the track according to the plans that Julian uh, created uh, we discussed all the ramifications, even James from Dongitz got involved as well. And we ironed out a few running issues with the proposed track plan. But overall, we have now got it to a point where it's absolutely 
set to go. Um, and like all things with the layout, I mean, it's been done on a computer. It's been done um, in with regards to a certified type of plan. In this case, it's Realm Modeler Pro. And of course, everything can alter in the real world. So whereas we've got siding going off at certain points and everything else is done, there is or has to be a little bit of um, flexibility in that already with this uh, thing here. Now, what you'll see, <laughs> I'm still on my hands and knees, the only way I can film this, um, but there's the original track plans or that's the tabletop build that we've finished with now, that's done. But before Julian came over, he actually segregated out all the um, templates for the track over the whole entire layout. And I then, because I've got a laser printer at work, I actually printed off all of those copies. Now, in essence, that was a fantastic idea. It certainly, if nothing more, gives a start to the process and a way to move forward and out from a certain point. Through this area here is where most of the points will lay, certainly in the initial part of the build. So when I started putting these out, it, it, came, it became clear very, very quickly that actually this really isn't working as we hoped it might. Um, I mean, with all printing, there can be a little bit of edge here. Do you go from the outside? Do you go from there? And it was a bit of trial and error. So basically, these will almost be abandoned. They haven't quite worked out as we'd hoped but they are there for any complex areas that we still need to overcome. So whereas they will not be put down and adhered to without question, we will have them standing by that I can refer to them should I feel the need. But let me just stand up. Ooh. No, no, I'm getting old. Let's put those out the way. So let's come back to this area here. And I've what I've done is that, that luckily for me, Julian actually put in the baseboard so that we can plan all of these sections. So by lining this up on here, so that it comes out from the back here to the front, we know where this piece of track comes across here and runs through here. We know the color tells me exactly where the, um, you know, this is for uh, the top level going off and around and it comes oh we're getting confused i think it comes in on this one uh no it doesn't <laughs> i'm not sure where that this blue one anyway these are the two main lines that run around and then we've got the orange which is the sub branch line that's coming through here and as hard as i could work out there were issues where certain things should go and we have issues already which we didn't work on or didn't plan as to where this part goes here, or here, or here, or up here. And the reason is that we, we had it set, but where we think it should be, there is a point motor right on a joint here. So that goes back to what I was saying a little earlier, that we will have to do a little bit of modifying from this point. So I'm making this my ground zero. This is where my cornerstone that we will inscribed the the foundation stone was laid here that's where we're working from because this little bit here i can actually um plan and put down with confidence so that's where we're going to go so the first things first i want to then put in a track like this so i'm going to get all my points placed and then come this way with the track and put this point in somewhere here so that it, it misses that piece of timber there so we've got a point motor here and carries on there so little things will alter according to our needs and or my needs so as I'm saying there is a lot of flexibility with this track plan in terms of exactly where the points will be and exactly how the shape of maybe sidings will go but essentially it's there and that is what I'm going to be following so okay so what I'm going to start with then is plotting this uh, 
curve point and then move on to this slip and then another curve point through here like that and so these three will be set up and from there we can start playing around now i'm just moving this around a little bit because having had a discussion with julian i think we need to just make that come around a little closer and that will give this one like this we're going to bring that over a little bit so this is what i'm saying about having a little flexibility in what we're doing so bring that this way a little bit and that will give me a nicer sweeping turn for this piece of track that goes off around here to what will be i think a little branch ending and um yeah well we shall see okay for many of you who have been following my channel for the last few years will really definitely know that when it comes to careful measuring and planning it's not one of my best uh fortes but having sort of been away from doing any track work for so long and this being an absolutely brand new build flush brand new tables i really didn't want to make a mistake and the last thing i really wanted to do was cover the whole thing in pencil marks get it wrong have to lift it up and start again so i took so much care I've got to tell you so many uh, times i came back looked at this and i don't think all of it is actually in the footage so yeah, let's get on, let's see how it turns out. These rulers, which are cheap as chips, they're cutting rulers, they're protected rulers, so you can put your fingers in and cut down without really risking uh, cutting yourself. But also, they are the right width for double O track beds. So if you put that on across here, then you can simply cut one, two, three, and just keep going until you finish cutting. Because these work out really, really nicely when it comes to the width of a track bed. You can see that just enough off of each side to give you a nice shoulder. So this, I think, is about 30 mil across, and that is just an ideal uh, cheap uh, rule that I can keep using, keep cutting, and end up with lots of little 12 inch pieces of this ready to go. Catch you all soon. Worth pointing out that at 915, you get, if you're careful about your cutting, you can get 26 length, 12 inches long, 26 length of this cork. And um, I think the last one is just a fraction, a few millimeters short. It's just slightly narrower, but mm, really you could lose that in another part of the track. But essentially, 26 pieces, if you're careful about the cutting, using a sharp blade and that uh, rule that I showed you earlier on, which is the non-slip, very, very cheap to buy. And uh, yeah, I think it will serve you well. I'm really getting quite excited now because that is going to come off of there like that, around there. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to just clean up so that I can get some copy decks out. Copy decks is my preferred gluing method. So I'm going to turn these over, get ready to do that, mark out roughly where these are going to go, and then we'll crack up. Okay, so I'm still rather paranoid. I'm still making checks. I'm still using the pencil, marking things out, planning for where I need to drill the holes later. But I'm now confident enough to get on and start gluing this first section of track in place and the cork certainly getting it down there ready to lay the points on top. The double slip is next and then the final curve point. Hi guys and a warm welcome back. Well it is Christmas and I have taken a break from my normal routine and to the point where I am starting to lay the first bits of track to the new sandy junction it's been a long time since my last video i do apologize but i haven't really had a lot of time the gallery and framing and printing and painting and commissions and stuff have taken their time uh, leading into christmas so this is really the first chance that i've had to get back into it and this will be my first point going in it's a curve point now i am taking some time out 
and I'm going to have some fun. And I'm going to wish each and every one of you a very, very happy Christmas as well. Although by the time you get to see this video, Christmas will be a, probably a distant memory. <laughs> have fun anyway. Take care. Okay, no more excuses. I've got to get that drill out and start making holes for the feeder wires, the frog wires, and indeed the point motor to come through. I'm using a one and a half mil drill mostly, but where I've got sleeving over the wire, I'm using a two millimeter. I'm also using eight millimeters to drive the hole through for where the point motor will come up. Now I'm clearing it all up in readiness to start test fitting or dry fitting the point in place. Now this is the first, this is the curve point. And I've got to get it ready to put into place as well. Now, what I'm doing here is taking off the old feeder wires. They were the ones that were in place cut away when I first started sanding junction originally. I'm reusing those, but I'm also using Charlie's uh, from Chadwick. His mantra is black to the back. And I think it's a really good way of remembering how to set your uh, track feeds up. Now, I went the other way when I first done sandling. But here I am resetting that. I'm using black wires that will be at the back and red wires, feeder wires will be at the front. So with these final soldering wires on and in place, I'm checking the frog wire, making sure there's no old uh, glues on the track either before I start to test fit it. And it really is an advisable thing to do. The last thing you want to do is get this done and get it all in place, get it glued down and realize it's just not right. Now here was a prime example, two millimeter drill needed to get that sleeving through from the frog wire. And I didn't want to force it because they're so prone to damage. So I made sure it was ready before I start literally gluing this point down in place for the first time. Okay, so they're now set up in place, the weight is on. Once this is dry in about half an hour or so, probably less, I'll set the slip up, get that going. And once that's in place, then of course I can start putting in this curve point here, just off, almost off camera. But I can then start laying the cork down through here, get going down this way and start laying some more track. So yeah, can't wait. It's a little bit of a learning curve again because it's been a few years really and truly since I've done a lot. And it's amazing, even a break of a year or so since I took down the old sandy junction. It's amazing how not easy it is to get back into this. Really, it, it took a little bit of thought and got there. And once I've done a few more pieces, then I'm sure it will be absolutely hunky-dory. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on and I'm gonna time-lapse whatever I do now. And uh, you see me put this one down. Okay, now for that troublesome double slip. And they are quite a difficult point to lay down and get ready and set up. I have actually made a video in the past on it and I put the link up in the top for you to look at because if you are setting one up, they do need a careful attention. I indeed missed off taking the springs out of two in my last layout and it was annoying, but there was not a lot I could do about it. So check it out and have a look. Okay, so the last point that I did, I actually used thicker wire. I didn't realize I picked the wrong rolls up. This is the wire that I should be using, which I think is seven as opposed to 16 or the even thicker bus wire 32. So I'm using seven to feed all the points and not 16 as you first saw me do. So I'm just going to take quite a bit off of this one like that. And this is the way I do it. And I was shown this, well, I saw it on another video many years ago, some years ago now. But it's just a way of uh, creating a bit more of a solid mechanical joint between the two in line. It's different when you're putting it across something, but when you're doing it in line, you don't want bulking great loads of wire. So what I'm going to do... Now bear in mind that that is coming like that. So this one is the black. What I tend to do is I will wind each other around like this so that we've got a good bonding between each one. Being careful not to go too aggressive because these small wires to these electrics are not as strong as you would like. 
what I will do now is just put some flux on there so I don't tin these first I simply put on like this and that's ready to go all I will do now put my mask on take my solder iron and just run the solder onto this joint making sure that there are, is no big lumps and making sure that everything is covered so that's that one done let that one go off turn it around and we'll do the same to this one here and once again we'll put like put them end to end so you've got nothing going over the casing of the feed wire and just bind them together twist them together it makes a good strong joint this way once again just put some flux on there you can see here it's just a little bit too much and I think that'll be fine I'm going to come in with some more solder just make that connection there there we go that's a nice solid joint between the two and then get some shriek heat shrink over here just like this feed it over and then you've got a very good solid um, and safe connection yeah, did I happen to mention double sips are a little bit troublesome to put down in place well this one proved to be no exception now I laid this on my sanding junction and I took it up there very very carefully but as you're about to find out this one was no exception when it come to be causing me a bit of an issue laying it down I thought I was doing so well <sighs> no it turned out not one, but both of the feed wires came adrift and had to be soldered back in place. That was so frustrating, I've got to say. Okay, while I'm doing this quite fast, I um, the little soldered joints that hold the wires in place on this came away. And that was an issue in itself. Now I hope in trying to put them right I actually haven't done any further damage otherwise this point will have to come out and then that's going to get expensive because these are not cheap as we all know hopefully though it'll be fine it's very careful slightly an untidy joint than what was originally made by Backman but I think hopefully um, Hopefully, would have got away with it. Trouble is, with things like these, is you're dealing with such tiny little bits of metal and stuff, and it's very easy to come unstuck with it. And hopefully, it won't be an issue. And hopefully, we can carry on. All right, so I'm praying, fingers crossed, and I won't know totally until. I've got enough room to put some power to this and just see if that's live, dead or a problem. If it is, we'll have to take it out and we'll have to start again. Okay, now two of those three points have been completed and are weighted down. The final one, this curve point, has to be finished off. I've drilled the holes ready for it, the hole for the point motors there. I've test fitted it. I've made sure it's all ready to go. The glue is down, it's ready to fit in place. And then I can maybe sit down and relax. And the first major headache or obstacle has been done, ready to continue on after Christmas. Okay, ready? Well, there we are, three points in place. Take me a little while to do it, only because really and truly, I haven't done any track work at all for, I don't know, a year or more two years I don't know but quite a long time since I've done any and it took me a little while or has taken me a little while to get back into it and uh, not make silly mistakes okay so I'm gonna put a bit of power on here and just see if we've got power through here that's the worry right now so I'm gonna get that set up and make it a simple simple DC 
I use one of my other older locos just for this job. Well, I'm happy with that. That is fine. Power is there. Okay, so with those three points now laid and set up, they really do, as I said earlier, form the bedrock or certainly the foundation stone of all the future track laying on this new layout. So it frees me up to start planning the track, drawing out where it should be, checking with the Pico gauges, so the distances between each track, planning the cork, cutting the cork, and also gluing that down the future points where they've got to be missing out any joints that may be underneath the baseballs that as I said earlier have to be planned for now because with all the planning that Julian and I made well more Julian than I as you all know with all that planning there was still those little areas that had to be treated and looked at just to make sure they would still work and a few compromises will have to be made and are being made but essentially the cork is going down and the track is being planned and laid and i'm really quite excited at this point not only are the tracks sort of progressing or is being progressed but i'm also getting back into the flow for the very first time those three points i did at the start were trialsome they they took me so long so much planning and it took ages to get them down i thought at this rate i'm never ever going to get a train running on the new sanding junction but it didn't take long as you can see from this footage of me just planning ahead laying a bit of uh, cork down weighting it down getting the track set up cut into size and this here was quite a difficult area with these uh, another double slip going in several points planning to go around to that first incline and that one offshoot that goes off to the hidden fiddle yard so those areas had to be planned quite carefully and that's where i ran into a, a few snags when it come to the timbers underneath the baseboard so i had to make a few compromises but they were done they were made and all the decisions were made and now i'm literally putting in uh, track i'm getting ready i've wired it i've gone back to the black as i said earlier and the red is now at the front and each piece of track has been cut measured checked and has also been made sure that there are no old bits of glue uh, that would keep it raised up off of the uh, track bed because obviously hard um, glue like that will just keep it raised up and we don't want any of that but Hey, the first lot are down and I've moved away from those three points and I've got them weighted down and we can continue from there. So a few hours have gone by or maybe overnight and I've got the new sets of track in, the cork's been laid and that was quite a complex arrangement to set up but it has worked, at least I hope it's worked and yeah, I'm just going to let you watch a little bit more footage before I bring this video probably to a close.
Okay, in all honesty, I have to say this is probably where I should have ended the video. But I was quite keen just to keep pushing on, adding more track, doing a bit more planning. And I thought I would film it and just bring you guys along for the ride. So I hope you don't mind my indulgence a little bit. But I just wanted to show you how I'm starting to think about the planning for the hidden fiddle yard. Now, as I said, it is hidden. It's going to be... Uh, non-scenic of course and it is just to store trains and locomotives so it was pretty much set up as an idea as to how many roads that I have how many go in how they are configured I don't think Julian sort of set it out too um, in, in such a way that it was so rigid and so I have got the area that I can create as much or as little as I really, really want to do. Everybody, welcome back. Now, I'm going to call this video at an end, and I'm not sure how long it's going to be. The footage that I've put in so far and edited down seems quite lengthy, but above all, a lot of it is time lapse, speeded up, and also very, very repetitive, and I don't want to bore you guys with this. So... The thing is that I've just charted the journey from laying these first three track points here, one double slip and the other curve point. That was my origin, that's my starting point. And then over the Christmas period, I've sort of slowly broken out and gone down here. And all of this front section is now laid and although untested because all the wires are there, but none of it is connected. Um, all the track looks okay. I've checked everything. All of this track is older track. Um, and hopefully it will not cause any problems at all. I'm saving all the new track for up around the back curve here and over here. And all of the areas over there as well. So a lot of my old track has been used up. There's still a little bundle over there to go through. But I've also just got to put in this last uh, few sections here um, and then I am literally going on into the underground fiddle yard now the underground fiddle yard I have as you'll see it's just laid out it's just there to see can I do it any better can I do I want as many roads in do I want more roads in how can I achieve the best uh, layout that I can for storage of trains now it may be a couple of weeks before I can get back up in the train room and do any more, but I really am pleased with the start and the fact that we have got track down and we're starting to make a real uh, significant change to the whole of the layout. We first part, as you know, was getting all these baseboards in. That's done and dusted. Now it's all about track land, point work, point motors, testing, all of those things that we can do before we can ever put the top layer on and before we can ever start doing any scenery so lots of work ahead but join me for the next one and before i finish i wish each and every one of you a very very happy new year uh, thank you for the support that you've given sand injunction in the past and new sand injunction in the future and i look forward to your company in the next video and until that time whatever you're doing stay safe happy modeling all the best, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.